So this video is a request from a few students uh, today in the build-up to their exam tomorrow. We're a little bit worried about how meander bends formed. So I thought we'd quickly go through that. Quite complicated, but if we break it down into steps, hopefully we can simplify the process slightly. So the first stage in the meander forming, remember a meander is a sinuous bend in the river. It's a series of connected bends, normally found in the middle course of the river where lateral erosion starts to dominate. So... During periods of low flow, deposition may occur in what is previously a straight river channel. We can see that here. So we've got a straight channel. We've had two areas of deposition. What this does is it creates alternating pools of deep water and shallow areas called riffles. So we've got a pool here away from the depos deposition and our riffle being shown by this area, kind of very close to that area of coarse material that's been deposited during low flow. What then happens is that the pools and riffles cause the flow of the water in the river to swing from side to side, trying to follow the path of deepest water. This is where there's less friction, yet it's easier for the water to flow. As a result of that, centrifugal force directs the fastest flowing water. Now we want to use the terminology here to show that we are, you know, we're really established geographers. Fowweg, okay, the Fowweg is the term that refers to the fastest area of flow towards the outer bank. This causes lateral erosion which we know is fundamental to a meander bend formation okay so let's just make sure we have that in there remember lateral erosion is what dominates in the middle course of the river in the upper course it's vertical erosion but here we have that lateral side to side erosion now what that does is it creates a system okay in which we have faster flowing water, that fowweg, being forced to the outside of the bend, causing erosion, predominantly by hydraulic action, that fast flow being forced into the outer bank of the bend. That causes high amounts of erosion, which creates a very deep channel and undercuts the outer bank, okay, creating like a concave shape to it. Okay. We call that steep outer bank the river cliff, and it is highly uh, vulnerable to the potential risk of collapse. On the inside of the bend, we have much slower flow. Okay? This causes deposition to occur, which normally creates something that we call a slip-off slope. It looks like a small beach on the inside of the bend. What we end up with then is an asymmetrical channel. Over time, erosion on the outer bank and deposition on the inside increases the sinuosity of the river. Sinuosity is basically the ratio of the river's length to its kind of, uh, sort of distance in a straight line from uh, source to mouth and then actually how long it actually takes because of the fact that it bends okay so the tighter the bends the more bends they are the higher the sinuosity now over time meanders bends become ever more sinuous due to a process called helicoidal flow okay what this helicoidal flow does is it takes material from the outside of the bend okay and transports it downstream to the inside of the next bend so if we take this to this series of meanders here if we've got material being eroded from that river cliff, that outer bend here, that material is then transported in like a corkscrew motion okay, to the inside of this meander bend here. Okay. If we were to look at that in a cross-sectional view, what we've got is the flow of water at the surface of the meander is being directed, as we said, by the centrifugal force to the outside of the bend. It's then still got energy, so it's forced downwards eroding material from that river cliff as it does so and then tries to make its way back towards the inside of the bend where it will then deposit that material but we've got to remember that not only have we got this flow in the bend like this obviously we've also got down um, slope flow of the river okay which is obviously going to not only move that material from the outside to the inside but also move it downstream to the next meander bend what we also get here is something that we call meander migration if you can imagine, you're having material deposited on the inside of this bend here by that helicoidal flow. So actually what's happening is the land is kind of building out that way. And over time it's going to keep doing that, building out further and further and further. Okay. At the same time, remember, we've got undercutting on the outside of that meander bend. So what we're actually finding is that this part of the bend is being eroded and collapsing. Okay. So actually what we start to get is the outside of the bend moves further around. Okay, and over time, further around and further around. 
And actually, as a result of that, the meander migrates and moves across the river valley, okay, in the direction of the outer bend. This is responsible for the formation of floodplains, okay, because what they do is that meander migrates, it cuts into the rocks around in the river valley, making the floodplains wider, making the river valley wider, creating that flat area that we know as floodplains. Obviously, meanders then do develop, as we know, into oxbow lakes and scars, okay, which is in another video.